Our first speaker of Act Two is a familiar face as she was the host of PKN 32 on the topic fate. Chantal, Chantal Chagnon is a Cree Ojibwe Metis storyteller, singer, drummer, at, uh, artist, educator, workshop facilitator, social justice advocate, and activist striving to change the world for our future generations. Please welcome Chantal Chagnon. Hello. Just a heads up, I am not prepared. I got the slides in at 3.30 this morning. <laughs> so let's start. <laughs> so this is me. I have never, ever been a normal child. I am not normal. I was the kind of girl who made everybody um, do theater productions in my neighborhood for fun. I lost my dad at seven, so I had to find some way to entertain myself and give myself some semblance of control. So I took up directing. This, I think, stemmed from my grandmother's and my family's background. Um, they were res uh, raised in the residential school. My cookum tried her best to escape that past. But unfortunately, no matter how far you run away from something, it will follow you. She joined the Air Force to try and find a new path for herself and for her family. She met my grandfather, who was Scottish, and they started a family. And she never wanted to go back to the reserve because she didn't want her kids to be raised in the residential school, to be raised around that abuse. But no matter how far she ran from it, there it was. And that abuse followed. That's called intergenerational trauma, and that was passed down to my mom. So my mom never learned unconditional love. She never learned how to accept who we were as Indigenous people. We hid it a lot of the time. We went to the farm, which was the reserve. But that, in turn, passed down to me. And to escape that trauma, I found all sorts of ways, but it was art that really gave me the ability to soar. And it was also my path of self-discovery. I came out to my mom as a bisexual woman, and she immediately said, you ruined Christmas! <laughs> and I said, it's fucking August. <laughs> Finding my path really was through my culture. Finding my healing was from my culture. And being able to recognize that my culture was a pivotal part of who I was and what was missing in that healing journey helped me to break my own cycle of abuse with my children. This is my son, Cloud. I was not ready to be a mom. I was 17 years old, but he was incredible. And he gave me that strength to continue following that path and breaking that cycle of abuse, teaching him how to be proud of who he was and how we were. And I got into many, many abusive relationships because I realized that, no, the pain wasn't coming from me, the abuse wasn't coming from me, but I was still carrying it and letting that allow, allowing that to happen. Then my second son, Lyndon, was born, and I quickly left that abusive relationship. Two sperm donors in, I moved forward with my life, and I had to find my voice. So when I came back to Calgary, I found my voice again through culture, through helping children understand culture, through sharing drums and songs and stories and empowering kids to be themselves and own who they were. And that was the power of the white buffalo, which was in the Stampede Parade, which was awesome. I was able to reclaim who I was as a two-spirit woman. I had to understand why all of these traditional teachings and songs and stories and arts were coming through me. And I realized it was because who I was as a two-spirit person, as a two-spirit woman, I had that ability to step in both worlds. Songs and stories and drumming came through me. Drum making came through me, which really threw me off the first time I did a drum workshop. And all of a sudden, I started teaching it. My mom was supposed to, but she just sat on the sidelines. And everything just flowed. Everything made sense. I was starting to just realize who I was and stop questioning and stop worrying so much about what that outside world was, worry, was thinking about. And I really started focusing on me and my healing and in turn helping people by teaching and helping to facilitate their own healing process. I got my voice and spirit back and so I had to share it. I gave so many incredible people who wanted to learn about 
First Nations culture and ways of knowing, but also how to heal their own lives in a good way, how to work through reconciliation and specifically with truth to understand their own truth within, because reconciliation starts within. Then I was able to raise my voice even louder as a feminist, and I joined the Vagina Monologues. I've been in the production 10 times, and every time it makes me stronger and more devout to really standing up for what's right, to make sure that we stand up against violence against women, that we give those women a voice, that we realize that we're strong and we're passionate. We deserve compassion, we deserve love, we deserve appreciation. This is why I have not been able to stay quiet. I stand up for what I believe in, and my pink hair has kind of become a beacon at a lot of different events, whether they be indigenous events, feminist events, or environmental events, because I stand up for what's right. I can't not. Every time I look at my kids, I feel guilty if I don't stand on those front lines and honor their future, as well as the future generations that they're going to bring forward. I get loud with my drums, because you cannot ignore a drum. You cannot ignore a voice. I used my power and my ability for media, because my friends needed me. They needed a context, they needed to share their story, and they needed that clear and concise way to do it. I used those strengths and those gifts to empower them and give them their own voice, because they need justice and nothing could stop me. Even being in a car accident, having three hip surgeries, and being stuck in a wheelchair for six months at a time for the last four years did not stop me. So I had to ask everyone what was their excuse, because I certainly didn't have one. So I rocked out all these different marches and rallies in a wheelchair. And then when I got my legs back, I continued to rise my voice in a good way. And I love the fact that we can empower so many people around us just by sharing our stories, sharing our voice, and sharing our ability. What connects each and every one of us is that ability to share our stories, to share our songs, to hold each other's hands and support each other in a community. Because in a community, we are all united. No one is greater or less than anyone else. And we are not alone. Hi, hi, and thank you so much.